can give a uh, good result. The only problem is that you obviously can use more fillers. So where we once were using one or two syringes, now we're using six and seven syringes. And sometimes it's hard to explain that to a patient that you need to have this much on board. So the price goes up from 500 to 2000 and you're going to lose some patients and gain other ones, I suppose. So the important point is, as I said earlier, each one of these departments is uh, independent. The repletion is not en masse, they happen at different times. Contour changes um, are individual and they reflect a different variance from patient to patient. And the retaining ligaments can find the fat areas, and retaining ligaments will accurately stabilize the skin. And um, the surface anatomy that we're looking at, that everybody sees when they look across the bar at somebody's face. It's only really a reflection of body completion and ligament fixation. So every aesthetic experience is a, what every patient is, is a journey, and we should be able to have the journey planned before we go there at all. We wouldn't go to Cannes in the morning without taking out a map, and a patient's face is the same thing. Choosing the right product, of course, is quite important because we probably wouldn't put um, uh, short acting or less cross link filler into uh, a deeper area. So there's different routes to a destination, but every patient that you see, in order to express yourself to another doctor, you should have some little cohorts. This is um, an interesting one. The artist with one of our colleagues come up with a variance of this. Um, and if you think in terms of grandpas, that's easy to remember. So the first thing you see a patient, their gender is male or female, so as a consequence, they would have different, I suppose, um, injection possibilities. Or is race, so you have different variabilities within race, particularly Asian faces tend to be different than um, Slavonic faces, which tend to be different than um, some other um, Caucasian faces. The age of the patient is obviously important. Their medical and surgical history, and the medical history will include obviously things like whether the patient's taken blood thinners, and this would include vitamin E and all the additives like cod liver oil, omega fish oils. They, they, they should be stopped probably at least a week before you treat the patient. Some people would say three weeks. Previous injection history is so important. What has somebody got in their face before you go there? So many products at the moment are coming in that are fake products and um, we can't stand over their um, origin. In um, Heathrow Airport last year there was 2.4 million sterling of fake aesthetic products that were confiscated. Not, so that's not even the ones that sort of are coming through. And they'll all be in boxes that look exactly the same as um, the patient would get with proper products. And a lot of the clinics are just using consent forms. And unfortunately, I don't know what it's like in, in the rest of the world, but in Britain and Ireland, it's just been totally out of control that um, beauticians are injecting patients. They have access to high layers, and they're not afraid to do whatever they want. And honestly, it's an uncontrolled world out there. The next thing's far down the list, but it's an important one, and that's the aesthetic wish. What does the patient want? because there's no use of standing there and saying, this is what I'm going to do to you. Um, because you often find when you ask a patient, they have totally different wishes. I mean, my next patient, I've just seen her downstairs, and she has quite marked mirror festoons, quite marked tear trough problems. And um, when I asked her, she actually pointed to a part of her face that I wasn't even aware there was a problem. So sometimes, you know, people can walk around for 10 years saying, I want to change this or this, and you're looking at the face. And if you don't ask the question, you'll not get the answers. The shape of the face is important. And um, these, uh, I suppose, are the different ones that we have, square, round, triangle, oblong, oval, diamond, heart. And as you can see, I suppose, by analogy, that some of these um, faces represented. And I suppose we um, would modify faces accordingly. So that would be round, oval, and heart-shaped. And um, 
different celebrities that I suppose represent these. Cameron Diaz, as you can see, has a quite a long face. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow has, um, I suppose, a square face. I'm sure Gwyneth would like me saying that. But, um, and um, I suppose Brenna has um, what we would take as a triangular shaped face. Now, in terms of facial assessment, what I tend to do is the following. You have to know your anatomy. There's no point in driving all the way to um, Cannes for Paris if you don't know the motorways you want to take. So there are certain danger points, obviously, within the face. So um, take into account that it's not just the two-dimensional anatomy, it's obviously the three-dimensional anatomy. Nobody is the same as the textbooks. You'll have vessels at different levels within the skin. You'll also have, you see yourself, those uh, demonstrations of facial artery making its way up. And only about 3% of the facial arteries run all the way up to the dorsal branch of the um, nasal architecture, even though the books will show you that 100% run up there. And about 33% end just before the nose at all, almost in the area of the labial arteries. The forehead height is quite important, and particularly if you're doing, I suppose, Botox, body line rather than fillers, you can adjust the height of the eyebrows, and as a consequence, you can uh, change the patient's face. If a patient's come to you with lines and lateral bractosis, in my estimation, it's better to treat the um, LDP because if you widen their ocular architecture, raise the brows, uh, the patient looks more interesting to other people. And an awful lot of why we do this, and that's a separate lecture I sort of do, uh, give why we change your face at all in the first place, is how people respond to us. You know, as soon as the patient comes in, they'll say, you know, Dr. Edward is asking me, you look so well, what have you done? And they couldn't figure out that we had done an exercise. And that's the best result you want for your patients. Eye size and intercanthal distance is important when we look at the fits. The shape of the nose, it should fit exactly into the space um, between the intercanthal distance. Obviously, lips um, and chins are important into the thirds and um, the skin itself in terms of the clarity, texture, and color. In terms of the products we're using here, Aperlane is um, a hyaluronic acid based filler, and the degree of cross linking depends on whether we're using the Forte, the normal, or the hydro. And you can see within it that the concentration is um, the same in both Forte and normal, but um, when we're using almost like the meso form, the concentration drops back from 2.3%, which is 23 mix per milliliter to 1.8. And you can see also that the normal and forte have the same molecular widths. They have BDD as a cross linker and um, they're based, I suppose, on streptococcal um, organisms genetically making the hyaluronic acid. And um, the different um, sizes of needles we use below, 30 gauge is used for the and um, more superficial and um, 27 within the normal and the 40 itself. Now, um, in terms of duration, um, most fillers will last six months, six to nine months, and we know that the more cross linked they are, um, particularly in terms of 40, they can last longer, eight to 10 months but most fillers would fit to the six to nine month category. And then this is just demonstrative of the different areas and what fillers we would use in the different areas. So they're color coded. Obviously the pink one is the forte, and you can see this would be cheekbones, deep down, cheek volume. And um, in this down for lips as well, I can't use normal lips. Um, I mean, I'm a bit different that way. And um, so you can use that as your injection zones. This is the injection force um, compared to TSO and to Juvederm. So it's pretty well placed there. In terms of viscosity, where we have by analogy high um, G 
GE properties being equivalent to something like jelly, and OG being equivalent to something more like water. And um, again, this is just demonstrative of um, the high viscosity of the forte compound. And um, there's some dispute with a lot of companies whether there is monophasic and biphasic in, in existence, and um, we can see the different ones within that. Now, different people have different injection techniques. You can use Harman technique, cross hatching, linear. I think this is really dependent on your own experience and what you get used to. There's no particular theory that says you should use one more than the other. And um, uh, this is one of the joys of using figures, I suppose, that you can almost um, develop your own techniques.